In this video, we're going to continue on with our point of sale system in JavaScript, and this is part 20. So what we're going to do now is basically work on what I first thought was the very complicated part, which is this one. If you double click on it, it should increase here as well. Right now, what it does is instead of um, instead of increasing this, what it's really doing, it's just adding a new item here. And of course, we don't want this. Luckily, I find an easier way to do it. So we don't have to restructure almost everything that we had before. So that was my biggest concern. However, so let's start to work on it. So we're going to use this and this will simplify it. So let's start and look at what we're really going to do. If we click on this, what we really need to do here is basically, if we click on this, we need to understand if we click on this and if there's already a value in here, we just add up a value in here. And of course we calculate this. So let's start and do this right now. So to do this, we go down here. We just have to scroll down here somewhere into the JavaScript basket. This order basket here. And within here, we can start playing around. So this is very, very nice. I'm happy to find this solution because it saves a lot of time. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to look here. Uh, what we need to do here, first of all, is to compare. How will we compare, for example, if we have an item here selected, I thought first we're having the ID, but because we have this structure here with the push, uh, what is that? This one here, we don't have any ID. We have a dynamic ID that refers, that has no real reference. Just only what we selected first and second. But I first thought we had to do probably within the uh, item array ID. Apparently we don't have to do that. We can compare it differently. So how are we going to compare it? Well, basically, with the text here. This is just a quick note, make sure you understand this. If you have two items with the same name, this is not possible. Of course, I do not expect you to have two items with the same name. If you have a pizza large and pizza small, you probably have different characters on there, like an S for small or a large, you have an L, etc., etc. So there should be, of course, a distinction in the item. If there's no distinction, if you have two times the same pizza one, pizza one, in that case, this structure will not work. But of course, in that case as well, you should ask yourself, why do you have the same name here for your cashier? That will be very, very confusing. So what we're going to do here now is that, so if we have, for example, pizza one, what we need to do then, look in the array for, if we select again on this, we have to look first in the array, if you already have pizza when already selected and on the list. If there is, in that case, instead of adding a new item, we just want to say plus one here. So let's start and do this immediately. So to do this, I'm going to show you an if statement here, or well, let me just do the basics first. We're going to use the item array here. That's this one here, this is the item name. So we're going to put in here this, and then what we're going to use here is the index of, and the index of will search for a item and search which index number it is located. This is extremely important for us. So in our case, we want to search for the item name, remember, that is the one, and we're going to say index of. If there would be anything, in that case, it should show a value. If there's none, it will show by default always minus one or negative one. So this is a important information to know because zero would mean in the very first, that's the first element in the array. Remember, arrays are zero-based calculation. So if I save this now, refresh, open up the developer tab and then we select this so you can see here now this is the minus one that is 259 all right 259 i know we have a lot of these maybe i need to clean up this eventually but that's all right for now and if i click again in this case 259 says now zero meaning it finds it in the very first array so if i select now second pizza minus one because it doesn't exist yet now we have created it so if i click now again this minus one 259 is now, uh, let's see, where are we now? 259, then it's here in the number two. All right, so this is correct. Of course, I noticed here I was getting slightly confused, but because we have here add one, add one, and here. So this is index number two, because this is index zero and index one, because we just still add up on it. What I want to do now is if we have this, we don't want to add anything. In that case, if it is in there, we want to increase an array number. Basically here we have the item quantity. This is by default always plus one if you select it. But 
if we have found our value in that case we don't want to use this item we want to just uh, increase in the specific index here so let me show you here this this is the console log and I'm going to grab this one here eventually as well and then you can see here this is the index that will be basically like this so what I can say here let's give it a constant number I'm just going to say index uh, we already use index number so I'm not allowed to use that one I think so let's say index item or item index number all right so just make sure you have a different one I just give it anything uh, right now just any kind of name that doesn't matter so I'm going to paste this in here so once I paste in here we have this so basically we say this index item number we put in here so if I save this now just put an enter here and just make sure you see this click all right on the finest one and I click again we have this one and what do I want to show here this is number one that's the index number here now I guess it doesn't mean anything right now because we need to plus this but we want to say this one should then be plus so what I'm going to do here if statement and this if statement will say the following if in the order item array the value is larger than minus one this would mean if we find anything in there in that case we want to do something so in that case I'll just say here uh, let's do console log so you will see it will respond nicely I'm going to comment out this we don't need that console log say yes it exists without s all right save this refresh click nothing happens here it doesn't exist yet now it should now it has existed select this yes it exists all right so this would mean now what we can do is basically we're going to grab this specific value Let's put it in here and then what I want to do now is this order item quantity number because that's the index directly matching with that what we want to do is whatever the index is we want to say this will be now the value whatever the value in here is plus one which makes sense so if I save this now refresh and let's close that click click and now you can see you see here nothing happens but look at this here it recognizes already that we have two if I remove this it only has one so this is correct because it will start to put in here it pushes in this item here or not even push it updates the specific item value in here it's very very important here so as you can see here then if I start to delete all of these one by one you can see apparently we have selected over six times so delete this x to zero so it recognizes the most important thing here so now we have this what I want to do now is to create here at least the very next item which is the else now we're going to do here basically everything here will be else so you're going to put all of this so if it doesn't exist in that case we want to push it push a new item in here so I'm going down here down here down here then you can see here so this is the ending but I don't want this here why this is the iteration still so this iteration needs to be up here while well, the cost calculation and the total item should all be calculated so this is all fine and I guess this we can just comment out or, remo or remove this we don't need that one and here I saw I noticed I type here it, uh, iterate which doesn't make any sense it doesn't it's not even a word and the main reason why is I work with a uh, common term is called uh, itinerary and so that's probably the reason why so this here would be iteration so sorry about the iteration that's the right term for this I for iteration so if I save this now, refresh, click, and click again, all right. So now you can see here, it recognizes the click here. It doesn't also add any new item in here, so it knows this already. If I delete this, there you are. So what we need to do now is now to figure out this functionality here. Because you can see this overrides this here, but this needs to be updated now. Because what we need to do here, if we click on this again, it should re respond similar to this pl plus button. So what I want to do here is I want to open up your developer tab and just search for the specific function here and this is the increment item all right so this increment item should be here and then this says one and one all right uh, we have to check later on what exactly is this but that's all right I'm going to zoom search for this we say here item all right 
So we have this here iteration item will be the order ID and then the value of it. So that one will be, and then we have to just see how do we update this because I want to push this one, but we need to get the value and the order ID. So what is the order ID here? If this is one by one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, then this should somewhere be called as well one. All right, so this is one, fair enough. Then this pizza here should be one as well here. This should be here. And uh, let's see here, pizza one. Why is this one? All right, uh, the order ID, I think it's because of the iteration. Let's try again. So I just have to figure out here what it is. Let's click on this and then I'll click on the item here. Now it's zero. All right. So what is really the uh, order ID? The order ID was this one related to here. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Uh, the order ID is the order ID here. So what we need to do then is the following. Here's the else. In here, we go to trigger a function. And what we need to do is we need to put in these parameters moving from one way to the other. So this order ID is probably item ID here. So let's look. So what is the function name? Increment item, and then we have two values here. So I'm going to say this is the function, and this function, what we can do is we say we want to trigger, and we want to activate this function as well. But here, we want to get this value here. This. And the other one, number one, is I guess a default plus one. Because if you click on this, this is always plus one, no matter what. That was built in in our function, I remember that. So all we need to do here is very simple. We say this item ID here, comma, and then we say the other one is number one. So if I save this, we should trigger basically this as well, and then it should just work nicely. So if I click on this, I click again, all right, Apparently this does not work as expected. Can I read properties of that one on 392 equals value? Uh, all right, what is the value then exactly? We have to check here, plus value. Then we have the index of, fair enough. So we have to see here what is going on so the reason why we had here, i remember we had your increment and decrement and i wanted we only have one function but i see now this will counteract probably slightly with our item because the value here or this here something doesn't want to work why it doesn't work item span all right order item so what happened if i just do here blank and well i think this will not work of course Click, click again. All right, we just have the same issue here. So this will be slightly more tricky. At least we have one part here, and that is the most important one. So what I'm going to do here now is I just have to figure out this one where we can trigger it. Because you can see here, all right, what happens is when we change another item, it does recognize it. If we click on this, it's a new item here. It will recognize it because you can see here we have more items. Click on this, this will work as well. And here again, this will work. Everything works, except we have one issue here. I'm going to figure out this one, so I will pause the video quickly. All right, so I figured out where the issue is. All right, so the issue is very, very logical. I'm going to show it to you, and, and then if you see it, you will understand as well very quickly. This is our issue. This is incorrect, and I thought I did it correctly here, but it is not. So uh, this, and the issue was eventually related to number 394 all right so we go down here 394 where it is the item this one here the item span so what is happening here the order id we need to figure out what's the order id and i thought i grabbed the order id but i didn't grab the order id and that's probably the main reason so if you look at it let's look at this what is the order id here if you go here you will find this one item zero so the id is zero all right so once you understand that and then if i go back here up i'm going to do console log or that's the console log of item id so if i go here now to the console again 
the item ID, which should be this one. Well, let's save this and refresh. Let's see if it works. Oh, it doesn't show yet. Uh, of course, it doesn't show it because it is not triggered. Does it? Ah, here you are. Once you click twice, it is number 12. So what is going on here? Number 12 was not related to what, what we need. Because we need array 0. Because it's the first one in the array. And that is apparently this value here. So, but you cannot say, well, let's be smart and I'm going to just put an I in here and then we problem solve. No. And the reason why is, well, let me show you. I'm going to show it to you so you understand immediately. That makes far more sense. Save this. Refresh. So if you say this, all right, this doesn't work anyway. But if you would delete an item, the incremental changes. So we cannot do this. So this is not the option here. What is the option is we need to get the index number. Basically this one here, this item here, together connected with this that is being pushed in here. So where is it being pushed? Let's search for it. The order ID array. All right. So I'm going to say here, basically I want this. Order ID array. And then, well, let's do console log. Then I get here the index number. Then if I save this and refresh, we get now the matching numbers. It still gives an error, of course. Why? Because we didn't put it in here. So now, just cut out this, paste this in here. We can just remove this, save that, refresh. So if I click now, there you are. You can see this is now nicely streamlined and connected. And if I do this and then I say clear this, then again, press this. All right, you can see here. Then clean up everything. I don't want anything more. And then, oh, do I want again pizzas. All right, then clear it again. And then press here. All right. Try this. We have all of these things here. And there we are. Beautiful. So now, basically, we have done one of the items that I thought would be far more complicated than eventually become. However, this is basically how we have now our functionality. Can we do it better? I'll tell you that there is a way to do it better is we eventually with the official item ID arrays, but it requires a lot of adjustments here and I, do, I am probably not in favor of doing that right now. I might do it eventually in the future videos. However, for now, this is the most important one and then we probably can start focusing on this part here more deeper, the printing item I still have to cover. And then we have to have maybe the order slips at the kitchen or the the bar knows exactly what to prepare.